Hi everyone, I'm Dan Harding, Editor-in-Chief of Power Motor Yacht. Today we're in Marion, Massachusetts to test out Imtra's new Zipwake trim tab system. Now, this is a product I was interested in testing a few months ago when it first came across my desk. You know, it's, it's not every day you hear about a system that with claims of increasing performance, fuel efficiency, and stability of a boat, all in one system that can be added to a new boat or used. So, really wide range of appeal for any serious boater. But then I found out the test platform was, was going to be a new Hunt, Surf Hunter 33, and then I was positive we were going to end up testing it. So with that, let's learn more about the Zipwake. I'm here with Jamie Simmons, Imtra's product manager for Zipwake. Jamie, it's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. So, you know, what, in a nutshell, 101, what is Zipwake? Well, Zipwake is a dynamic trim control system. It's, um, it's, a, it's interceptors, it's going to do everything your traditional trim tab system would do for pitch control and you're also going to add in the fully automatic roll control which is a really nice feature. So um, it's really nice for the end user, whether it be a new boat or aftermarket, they're going to be able to use the automatic function, it's going to control your pitch and your roll, mm -hmm. they're not going to have to touch any buttons so it's really nice for the end user for running the boat. Um, they're not going to have to play with any controls like they've had to do in the past and it's also going to you're going to see a lot of benefits whether it be fuel efficiency you're going to be able to plane at lower rpms and obviously the, the automatic roll control is a major feature so you have you know at speed stabilization as well so I mean, what's kind of the, the sweet spot in the size range that that the zip wake is is equipped for well the size range is really from that 20 foot to 60 foot range mm -hmm. Um, our sweet spot so far we've seen the 30 to 50 foot kind of the hot area where we've been seeing most of our systems going on however we've we've gone as high as 70 foot plus the, they, the largest boat to date is about a hundred feet we've installed it on oh, okay um, but really that 20 to 60 foot range is the, is the sweet spot and once you get down below 20 the, you know the system can be a little bit more expensive for a boat below the 20 foot range but um, you know that 20 to 60 foot is really the, the nice spot for the product Gotcha. And now I'm actually really interested in the aftermarket aspect of the of the Zipwake. I mean, what what kind of price point are we looking at for for the different systems? So for for the range of 20 to 60 foot, the low end uh, system. Once you're in the lower 20 ish area foot area, you're looking at probably about 2,500 mm dollars. -hmm. Once you get up to that 60 foot range, where we need more coverage and more interceptors, you're probably going to be around the 5,000 dollar range, and that's retail pricing. Okay, excellent. So I know we have a we have a model here. I mean, can you walk me through. I mean, how how exactly does the model work? Absolutely. So this this model here, this would be the largest interceptor in the range. This is the 750. Okay. Um, this would be flush mounted directly on the transom. Gotcha. And the blade is going to be coming straight up and down vertically, opposed to a trim tab that comes back off off the transom on an angle. Right. So as you can see, the stroke that would be a, a full stroke there. You're looking at 30 millimeters of deployment, just just shy of about an inch and a half deployment. So the stroke is very limited. Well, that's that's amazing. That you know, really, your some of the performance numbers you guys were touting is really just coming from an inch and a half. You wouldn't have thought, but I guess it's because it's flush mounted that it really gives you more of that lift. Yeah, so it's really nice. I mean, it's flush mounted to the transom, so you don't have anything hanging off the transom. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, when you're in neutral, reverse, or lower speeds, they're going to automatically retract, so you don't have anything hanging off the transom, which is really nice. Whether you be fishing, you're not going to hang up a line, right. or, or backing down, you're not going to hang up a dock line, which is really nice. And they're nice and flush on the transom. Gotcha. So if I have this correctly, you know, this will be on the transom, so you're. You're throttling up. You're, you're trying to get on the plane. That's that's where it'll retract until it's fully, fully open. And then as you're getting onto plane, then it retracts. I mean, is that in a nutshell? Yeah, that's correct. So depending on the boat and the pitch curve that that you know you put in the parameters of your boat, it, it automatically calculates a pitch curve for those certain parameters. Gotcha. And as you generally increase speed, it's going to fully deploy the blades at 100%. And that's to help generate lift and get you up on a plane. Once you start going faster, the faster you go, the more effective the, bl the blades become in the water, mm -hmm. the less blade you need, so they start to retract. Gotcha. Once you get up to you know, higher speeds, the, you'll actually notice on the screen that your deployment of the blade is pretty much zero at that point. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's going to be predominantly roll control. So whether you're listing or you hit a wake or you're in a seaway, it's going to automatically deploy the blades to flatten out the boat at any given time. Okay, I mean, it's, again, amazing really how how small the blade is, but I mean, what kind of speeds are we talking about? I mean, this, you know, how, how fast is this deploying and retracting? 
uh, for a full deployment, you're looking at about a second and a half for deployment. So mm -hmm. compared to normal trim tabs, they can be anywhere from eight to ten seconds, sure. which is you know the speed is a, a substantial benefit of the of the interceptors. I mean, you can react so much quicker than a tab system, mm -hmm. which is you know it's going to help with. Um, especially the roll control, it's very active. It's going to flatten the boat out really quick compared to the auto trim systems that are out there right now. They're much slower. So, I mean, you could see 15, 20 seconds until the boat flattens out. This system, on average, is about, depending on the system in the boat, you're, we've been seeing about four to eight seconds for the boat to flatten out completely. Wow. And so, I mean, what kind of what kind of material is this? I mean, it's, I mean, it's. Feels really strong, but I mean, this is definitely a, a plastic. Yeah, so the, there's a lot of plastic engineering that's gone into the product. This is a Teflon-based material. Mm -hmm. um, inside, if you flip this over, there's um, there's a bunch of different types of plastic in here. These are these are the um, the slip bars here. That's a really um, slippery plastic, so that's to take the torque off the blade. Okay. So that allows these for these right here. What's going to be right on the the transom? That's correct. Well, actually, no. There would be the back plate here, uh, and then the blade is kind of a sandwich part in between. So uh, when the servo motor runs okay. the blade, as you can imagine there's going to be torque there's going to be rubbing on the blade and those are in there to let that uh, torque no, to minimize okay. the torque and let it slip gotcha i mean this must see some serious force i mean this is this definitely uh it seems feels over engineered it does it's uh significantly over engineered i mean this this product here we do have a 60 knot threshold so uh, boats that are actually going to exceed that 60 knot threshold this would this would not be a fit for those boats mm -hmm. um Generally, you know, nowadays we see a lot of boats with with multiple outboards that are exceeding those speeds. So this is not the best fit for those boats, but a majority of the market, it's going to be a really good fit for whether it be uh, commercial applications or recreational. Excellent. Very cool. Anything uh, anything else you wanted to touch on? Um, the, the system's really simple, as you can see. What drives it? There's no. This is not a hydraulic system. Um, it's strictly an electric servo motor here. Okay. The, uh, it's the same servo across the board, whether it be the four different sides of interceptors, it's the same servo. Mm -hmm. um, the through hole fitting is really nice. Um, there's a, there's mm -hmm. a, a flush mount that would go directly out the back of the, the base plate that you wouldn't see the cable. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have access to the, to the bilge in that area or you couldn't do a through hole, there's also an above the water line uh, installation as well, which is really nice. Now let's head up to the helm area and show you how simple it is to set the system up. Nice, let's check it out. So it's really simple here on the on the helm position. You have your zip wake panel here, your control panel. It's going to be the same panel whether you have one helm station or two or even three. Um, when you come to the system, this would be whether you get it from a boat builder or an aftermarket um, boat. Um, basically, the first thing you do is just select the English. Unit of measurement here would be Imperial. Then you're simply going to put in the parameters of the boat, whether um, you know the, the 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 length of the boat, the beam, the boat weight, and then it's automatically going to know how many interceptors you are because have on the system because it can pick that up. Mm -hmm. So this boat, this would be a Hunt 33. We're going to do 33 feet. It has an it has an 11 foot beam, and the weight is roughly 12,000 pounds. Going to hit next. Now it's going to automatically calculate your pitch curve. Mm -hmm. Give it about 10 to 15 seconds and you're all set. You're ready to go. So again, you know, just putting the inch zip weight through its paces. And we're doing a bunch of different speed speed runs with the system off and on. And what we notice again, we're on the Hunt Surf Hunter 33. And really the feature that's to stand out, we saw a couple extra knots of speed. We saw a little bit of better fuel efficiency, certainly. But what really stood out is, is the time to plane. You know, it was reduced by a couple seconds. And also the bow rise, we saw a big difference. With the system off, we were getting between yeah, the up close to 10 degrees, and with the system on, it was close to more to four or five. Now, it might not seem like a lot, you know, a couple degrees here, you know, a couple knots, a couple percentage of fuel efficiency, but I think you add all that up with a, with a pretty simple addition to something like the zip wake, it really makes for a much more cru comfortable cruising experience. One thing we're not able to test too well right now and see, you know, real, a boat of this size and these kind of conditions is the sea keeping. We see that the zip wakes work and keep us stable, but I think we're going to hop over to a Boston Whaler 22 Outrage and, and see what the system does for that boat. All 
All right, so just hopped off the hunt to the Boston Whaler 22 Outrage, also equipped with zip wake to see what it's like on a smaller boat. We're gonna start off just by getting a feel for her here. Well, I tell you, in a much smaller boat like this Boston Whaler 22, you really get the full effect of the zip wake. When, you know, going up onto plane, really some pretty serious bow rise, but it levels right off. Just watching the display, I mean, it, this thing is working nonstop, you know. And it really is amazing, again, right? An inch and a half in the water, what kind of effect it has. Much more stable ride with the zip wake on. It, it actually, again, it helps it, really helps it cut corners as well. So we were seeing when you do a hard turn to port, You'd have your port zip wake all the way deployed, and it really helped smooth out that ride. Uh, really cool testing on both platforms, and really a testament to the zip wake that really can work through on boats varying in styles and and makes. So just finished up running a couple craft over on Buzzards Bay and got a really good feel for the zip wake underway. Uh, my question now is, you know, what's typical install time for this project? Well, it's certainly a good question. Um, there's a lot of variables there, depending on the type of boat you have and how intricate the system is, how many interceptors. I mean, uh, on a low end, you, you could be looking at 10 to 12 hours of labor. Uh, that's pretty typical from what we've been seeing for some of the smaller boats in that 20 to 60 foot range. Right. Um, if you don't have a flat transom and, and require some additional glass work, yeah. that, that time could certainly be um, you know, three, four, even a week of labor it really depends on how familiar the yard is with the installation. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other variables, whether you have um, other products in that area, such as underwater lights, or um, you have to build up a, a flat flat surface because they do need a flat surface to be installed on. Right. And I think with most boats, it's really a boat by boat basis. But let me ask you, I know you guys recommend a professional or yard installation, but I think our guys, the Power Motor Yacht Readers, are going to know if, if this is something a weekend warrior can tackle. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly a good question uh, for the DIY guys out there um, and, and girls. Um, it certainly can be done. Yeah, if you're, if you're fairly comfortable with, with um, you know, installing, like, for example, a simple trim tab system, there's, there's not really much else work besides, you know, making sure, preparing the surface on the transom and installing it. All the wiring is all plug and play, which is really nice. You don't have to run any harnesses. Sure. And um, if the one, the one area that does get difficult, if, if there is glass work, if you're not comfortable with doing glass work, that's probably something that you want to stay away from. But sure. um, for, for if you're fairly confident and you think you could handle uh, the installation and, and you don't require any of that additional work, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, fair enough. Well, like I said, we had a great day experimenting with the zip wake. Thanks a lot for your time. Yeah, really you. appreciate it. And for the full report on Inch's new zip wake, you want to stay tuned to a future issue of Power Motor Yacht and PMYMag.com.